because I have tomorrow off. So I get to go with some friends to an event in Grand Rapids, and I'm so excited. It's the Joyce Meyer Conference, where we all get to worship in person with all kinds of other, mostly women and some men, and there's worship bands, and it's all good. So it's girl time, and it's worship time, and it's God time, and it's listen to Joyce Meyer time, live in person. She's getting up there a little bit, kind of like the Queen. The Queen's birthday was today, uh, and she's 70. So... <clears throat> We have to appreciate the people with the ages because they're not going to be around forever. You got to think about what kind of legacy they're leaving. So, so that's what I'm geeked about today. It's also a beautiful day. It's uh, sunny and cloudy and uh, cool. Not too bad because the sun gets covered by the clouds, so it feels real good. Um, but I'm going down to Madison Heights to put in the last four plants for that installation. That would be two zebra plants and two cup plants. And all four of those are going to grow pretty pretty well. They're, um, the cup plants are natives. So you've got to be careful with native plants because sometimes it means they're going to grow so well they're going to encroach on other things. So think about that natives are good for your environment of your garden because they actually grow well in our area and that means that the local bugs and um, soil and climate is all good for this plant so if you buy plants that don't get any bugs they're probably not not native plants and if the bugs don't have any kind of environment to munch on or make a home around or whatever, then you may not have um, good soil health and you may not have pollinators come into your flowers to fertilize your... That's what pollinating is. Fertilizing so that you get fruits and vegetables and so that... Um, yeah, so that life can go on because you have to have that fertilization so native plants are good because they aren't usually very fussy they usually grow pretty well pretty vigorously but if you don't keep your eye on them they could get invasive so um, the cup plant likes to grow sideways it likes to send out volunteers which is fine because if I visit this client's garden each year I can find those volunteers and I can put them somewhere else in their yard. So free plants for them. So that's a good thing. Um, they came in the mail. Both sets of plants came in the mail. And I did a little bit of unboxing. I didn't do any videos on that. But they were both, both sets were shipped just so well. So well. Um, yeah, I've got photos of that. I'll, I'll post that later. Uh, but I was I wasn't sure what to expect, you know, because in the old days, you know You get something in the mail you get a plant in the mail and it's like all dried up or mangled or whatever and these were not these aren't definitely were definitely packed well and with care uh, So I'm excited to put these in for the client and that will finish up their perennial uh, Bed and that's the one in the strawberry bed. I do have a video. I'm going to make about um what I did last time when I was there. I just haven't gotten around to doing that yet. So what else was gonna tell you? Beautiful days. Um, at the homestead, we've got everything planted that's supposed to be planted. Somebody asked me how many kinds of flowers we have. <laughs> and I had to say, I really don't know. I have no idea because I just keep planting them. <laughs> and then with the cutting garden, the addition of the cutting garden, that's probably, gosh, 10 more types of flowers that I've not grown before. Um, but they make beautiful bouquets. I've been sharing photos of those. Um, and I really like them. Like today, it was the Japanese anemones. Anemones, that's a fun word. Um, they, when the flower bloom fades and they start going to seed, the deadheaded flowers are really cool looking they're um they're like spiky and they're almost they're like like this kind of shape like 
outward like this and it almost looks like fireworks inside an arrangement it looks really neat and uh, I have not grown anemones before uh, a client of mine has them in her yard now he thought they were beautiful and I thought well let me let me start growing them and see what see what happens and so I didn't know the care and feeding of them until this year so when I looked it up they said yes do deadhead and you will get more blooms which is great because I like them they're purple purple flowers and they're perennials um, and so deadheading those flower arrangements I don't know just a good day it's just a good day uh, I got done with my regular job I got a decent nap at my age you need naps and uh, and so now I get to finish this job up for them and and then cup plants the cup plants are just little they're just little babies right now they came in little two inch pots aren't they cute but these things are gonna get like eight feet tall and they're gonna be so cool when I go home I have to video uh, or show you guys uh, my cup plants in my garden um, how the leaves have formed around the stalks and they're, how they're collecting the water because it's so cool and then the <clears throat> um, the birds um, and insects come and they drink the water one cool thing I got also I'll show you I'll show you is these labels they're uh, bamboo labels and they came with markers I mean you could write with a regular marker on them but they're like in this cool box there's like a billion not a billion there's I think a hundred in a box and they're really handy because they're they're about mm, two inches tall in the um, in the pokey part, <laughs> two three inches tall. So it's a good depth. To, and so when you put them in the ground, they really stick. Um, and I thought those were kind of cool. Those were on through Amazon, which you may or may not be a fan of, and that's okay. And they're they were this brand, Home Notes. I know that's mirrored for you. Um, but I really like them and this pot box is small enough I can put it in my um, toolbox a uh, garden toolbox and then as I put in new plants I can label them and then I, I'll know the difference like today I just looked up the difference and planted I have borage I started a couple seeds of borage a couple plants of those from seed and then I have had um, comfrey and comfrey is a wonder plant Comfrey leaves are phenomenal. The comfrey plant puts a taproot down way down deep, way, way, way further down deeper than all the other plants in your garden. And it pulls up all kinds of minerals and things from the soil that the other plants can't get. And it goes into the leaves and into the flowers and stems. <clears throat> and then when you cut those leaves, you can leave them around your garden or you could shred them up and throw them around your garden or you could um, make a tea or you can make, there's medicinal uses for it, which I don't know because I don't practice medicine. Um, but I wanted, I made sure that I put labels for uh, the comfrey and the borage because they kind of look similar. Um, borage has purple flowers. That's it, purple flowers. And uh, no, comfrey has purple flowers. Comfrey has purple flowers, and the borage comes in white, pink, and I think blue borage. Um, and then I think the uses for borage are similar to comfrey, but I'm not sure. And there's some medicinal use for that as well. So, uh, heading back down into the city, I took a different way, so construction is not terrible, thankfully. And. I'm just jamming out to my music. Seems like I jam out to my music in the car or in the shower, which is fine. And it fills me up a little bit. Um, but if you happen to have any garden questions, I can't like see them online right now. And I know I don't have any kind of regular live schedule, like Tam's coming on at this time and this day. So we'll send her questions in. We know she's coming, that kind of thing. Um, but if you happen to think of any questions, you can always send them to me and maybe I'll answer your questions on the on the air in the live uh, so Let's see. So there was there were questions I had today like one was um, Do you deadhead 
Japanese anemones? And the answer, big answer is yes. Another was if I cut off blooms for red hot poker, or they're called torch lilies, will they grow back? And the big answer was yes. So what you do is if this is, if this my hand is the torch lily blossom and it's done blooming, about a half an inch down past the bloom is where you cut it off. And that's gonna send a message to the plant to send up more stalks with more flowers, which is exciting. Um, but just like any other perennial, you don't cut everything back until the spring. And in fact, with the um, red hot pokers, the torch lilies, you take all the leaves, they're like grassy leaves, you take all the leaves and you push them all up together, and then you can like tie it up in the winter time and it protects the crown of the plant from the snow. Uh, so that's torch lilies, I wanted to know about deadheading those. Um, my red bud out front isn't blooming. Well, it had one small set of blossoms literally like this much blossoms <laughs> my red bud tree I did plant it from a, um, a bare root plant and that was two years ago and so what they said mostly is that red buds um, they're understory trees, so they, but they don't like it totally shady. They do need some sun. The sunnier it is, and that's the tricky thing. The sunnier it is, the more they bloom, the better they bloom, but they don't want total sun. They, they like to have a little bit of shade. They said, um, they said they want about four to six hours of sun for maximum bloom. I'm like, okay. So I think I've planted my red bud too close to my, uh, Norway maple and it's getting way too much shade I think so I might be moving that soon and that's okay you can move a tree just like you can move any other plant and it's on keep it keep it well watered um, and keep an eye on it and just just like any other plant you can move it in and my my aunt my aunt Bev bless her heart um, she is with Jesus now but she's, she was a big proponent. She said, you can move anything at any time, which is true. You just if, if it's hot, you're just going to have to water it probably twice a day. You're going to have to monitor it and make sure you put it in, the, in a good spot, too. Um, so that was my red bud tree. What else? There were a couple other questions I had put in like a phone memo. And then I looked them up today. I can't remember. Um, oh, I need to. I need to find out whether I should be deadheading uh, the annual salvias that I just put in for butterflies. Oh shoot! I should turn. That's okay. Uh, so I needed to know about deadheading that. And I'm excited because <clears throat> I just got in um, 15 cone flowers, red cone flowers, the sombrero cone flowers, and they're in little pots too. They're in just like two by two pots, two by three pots. So they don't look like very much right now, but I know cone flowers, they get big, and so they're gonna grow up pretty well. And I'm excited because I have nearly all the plants, excuse me, that I'd like to put in for my um, customer in Matamora. And I'm excited because um, it won't be this weekend, so I have to keep everything alive at least one more week. It's going to be the weekend of the 10th and 11th, um, or 11th and 12th, the Saturday and Sunday. <clears throat> I'm, I'm excited about that. That's the one where it's got a hilltop uh, along the driveway, and then it's got a slope going down to a hill, and then the hill slopes down. And I'm doing the top of the hilltop and then the sloping part. And... Um, that was the one where she likes really bright colors. And she wasn't sure, but one of her kids may have a bee allergy. So I was trying to do a little bit less bee friendly um, or bee attracting flowers and colors in the design for that one. So that's exciting, I'm, I'm geeked about that. And don't know what else. So have you planted a flower yet? Have you planted a vegetable, maybe in a container? Have you 
planted a shrub or a tree. How is your gardening coming? Even if it's very, very little. Have you grown some salad greens in a windowsill or some herbs in a windowsill? Have you grown a garden for your cat yet? Or have you grown a tea garden? Um, think about it. Herbs, herbs are like the easiest things that you could grow ever, ever, ever. They don't need a lot of sun because you're using their leaves and they're not trying to produce fruit like a, like a pea wood or a tomato. They're not trying to produce flowers to produce seed like a, um, oh, like a daylily wood or, or something else like that. <clears throat> and in fact, herbs, um, if they get, if they're put in direct sun or they get too much sun, they actually will, what they call bolt, where they're like, oh, now we're going to make some flowers and seeds. <laughs> they're like, it's hot. We, we have to reproduce ourselves. We're dying. So because they don't they don't like direct sun for long periods of time like that so they will send up stalks they'll go really tall and lanky and set up stems and on the ends of the stems will be flowers and then the pollinators will come to the flowers and then the flowers will turn to seeds and then when the wind blows the seeds or the plant actually dies and the stems fall over then the seeds reproduce the plant so uh, I have an example of that in my cilantro. Poor little thing. I've been nursing it and nursing it. No, it, it's bolting. So I'm going to let it bolt. And when in the seeds, um, it's cilantro. It's something that people sometimes like or sometimes don't like. Um, but when it makes the seeds, those are coriander. The seeds are considered coriander. Or I could take those seeds and then I could just replant them underneath some tall or shady or uh, taller plants that would give it shade. And I could replant them in the soil and then have new coriander. And that's probably what I'm going to do. I actually bought some coriander seeds in a packet. And I'm also going to, I'm going to try planting those like next to some of the, um, the coriander that comes from the bolted cilantro and see what happens. And sunflowers. I can't help it. I have to plant more sunflowers. I have to start more sunflowers. I, that's just what I'm doing. And so my husband now is saying, more sunflowers. Are you sure you want to plant more sunflowers? Why so many sunflowers? And I'm like, well, why not? Why not? They're beautiful. So, um, yeah, he's kind of giving me grief about that. But they're all different kinds. There's like... Last year, it was mostly Russian mammoth and some of the red with orange and yellow and a teddy bear and oh, and like some multi like bush forms of sunflowers that have little smaller blooms all over the place. And that was it last year. That was all. That was it. That was it. So this year, I've got the Russian mammoth. I am um, doing some teddy bears again. And I'm doing white nights and lemon, lemon drop they're called. Those two are both pro cut sunflowers. I'm doing pro cut rainbow mix. So that's going to give me a variety of colors that are the pollenless. Pro cut is pollenless for bouquets or arrangements. And a um, couple other kinds that I can't remember. <laughs> But I, uh, the way, and the way I start the sunflowers is I put them in, um, I put them in the potting mix in, you know, in the, in the six pack cells or whatever, six pack, six packs, four packs, um, <clears throat> with plain old potting mix. And I start them on the porch. And then pretty much as soon as they have, I, I don't really wait till they get their true leaves now. And it's doing fine. They're doing fine this way. I just wait till they get their first two leaves, their first like baby leaves. And then as soon as I see that everyone's got their baby leaves, then I go out and I transplant them. Because the baby leaves have enough energy for the plant to survive. And because I started them outside, I don't have to harden them off because they're already becoming accustomed to the sun. As they're coming up, they're getting accustomed to the sun slowly, you know? And uh, <clears throat> and so the ones I've been planting are, they're doing really well. Um, 
just planting with just baby leaves sunflowers some people say sunflowers don't transplant very well and that's true as far as like they don't prick out with like with a fork or a tool very well like a uh, cabbage or broccoli or lettuces or spinach it's not like that they, they don't like that very much but they don't mind being moved when they're little babies at all at all at all and sunflowers are going to grow in like all kinds of conditions like i have a rocky sandy stony area that's my self-seeding garden along the west side of the house and it looks terrible but the sunflowers i plant in there are very happy they're growing they're thriving the newest garden my cut garden it turns out the soil under there is really clay um i haven't had the chickens working it and uh this is the first time that it's really been planted heavily in and we had cardboarded over grass and then we put wood chips on top of that um but the soil underneath there is just not it's not great i'm not thrilled with it so i'm gonna have to start amending it um and to make it better but all of the sunflower babies I put in there are doing fine they're very happy so okay and uh, you know sometimes maybe I like I'll take I'll take either like a either a fork to get them out of the, the smaller cells or um, one of those craft sticks like the thicker kinds the tongue depressors you know the doctors use and I'll use that to gently lift them out of the cells um, but if there's any soil that's left over in the cells, then I will just like sprinkle it over the top. Like I'll dump it out and sprinkle it over the top of the roots area and then straighten up the little baby. I'm going to like grab it and like make a little clump, 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 and then fill in with the, with the mulch. And, um, they are very happy. It's very difficult to not be able to grow sunflower so maybe that's the one sun maybe that's the one flower you want to try this year try it see what happens they like sun though do put them in a sunny area don't put them in shade do put them in a sunny area look for a place that's got at least six six hours of sun uh, maybe you put some just by your mailbox out uh, out by the road or maybe you put them um along your driveway or maybe you just put two with a little basket around them to protect them from rabbits or deer or the kids or whatever soccer balls um, but try it see what happens you really it's really difficult to kill sunflowers another good beginner uh, flower is zinnias zinnias love to be planted and they love to grow and so do cosmos they love to grow marigolds love to grow um, those are great beginner plants and they come in all different um, sizes and colors and it's not too late to get them to get seeds that you like so you can look at the racks of seeds and see what colors you like so that you can make a color palette that that's matching or contrasting in the way that you want but it's but you could play be planting the seeds gosh you could plant them what at least for the next two weeks and make sure they're watered every day don't let them get dry if you can Make sure they're watered every day and then uh, and then they'll just grow which is great so um, anyway almost there just figured I'd say hi hi and checking with everybody Ooh, there's construction there I'm not going there and that's it so Tammy Lowe the lazy northern gardener um, oh I have been putting these Facebook lives over to YouTube if you wanted to share them with your friends or if you find any part of it um, helpful feel free share with people or if you've got comments or questions or you like totally disagree with what I say please let me know I'd love to get your feedback so at any rate yay motorcycles it's summer uh, <laughs> Tammy Lowe the lazy northern gardener saying learn and grow and I love you if anyone hasn't told you today I love you I I I love you I love you I love you and you have a creator who loves you even way more than I do and more than anyone else in the whole world so happy Thursday learn and grow and I'll see you later. Bye.